everyone. Welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. Hey. Today, we're going to talk about who the top ranking women entertainment would get behind for the 2020 presidential race and why many think the infamous gossip girl from the hit CW show may be at work at Netflix. Plus, investigative filmmaker Jeremy Corbell joins the table to discuss his new film, Bob Lazar, Area 51, and Flying Saucers, along with internet sensation Tinkerbell, the dog, Woo! guys. Yay! Yes! But first... But first, a London hotel has designed a womb room to help guests sleep like a baby. <laughs> According to Insider, architects spent nine months, ha, yeah. <laughs> working on the womb-resembled rooms, which have soft lighting, a cocoon-shaped bed, and peach walls to induce <laughs> relaxation and REM sleep. That sounds fun. There's also restorative scents. Uh -huh. Restorative Which scents? scares me a little bit. What, yeah, what is that uh, really? Exactly, like calming scents, but if it's based like a womb, like it just it Well, do you know if a womb smells bad? I can't smell great. It probably doesn't yeah. smell good. <laughs> well, it may not smell bad. How do we know what a it womb smells like? It probably smells like well, salt Thank you for iron. being such a feminist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, that's my you job on the show. <laughs> I actually have this cologne that's 100% placenta. And I put it on every morning, and I love this thing. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. It's magical. But I will say, though, I actually buy into this because um, being swaddled, apparently. You know when you see babies yeah. swaddled yeah. in blankets? Like, it helps them sleep. Like, they're, they make adult swaddles now because yeah. adults want to sleep like a baby. Yeah. And so I, t I totally get this. I get it. I ask my girlfriend to swaddle me. Right. <laughs> and she rolls me up like a little burrito yeah. and goes, oh. oh. I don't feel like you're joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've swaddled my dog. And I go, I do that with her, too. Everyone's being swaddled in my house. No? Yeah. 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 I feel like I like a comfortable like hotel situation, though. Although, being in New York City, most hotels are about that size anyway. So yes. It doesn't feel like that innovative to me. But I do love that they're trying new concepts, because in the, uh, the article that uh, we were taking this from, it mentions that a lot of people don't sleep well when they're in hotels. Mm -hmm. And so it's like... It's I true. Am, yeah. But I am surprised by that, because I love a hotel bed, <laughs> and it's so clean, and it's so, you can t it's so tucked in, and you get in, it's so perfect or whatever. Here, yeah, but start thinking about... I know it looks clean, Clean, but start thinking about how like, it's not really. No, clean. you gotta rip that oh, yeah. that and top also, cover off immediately. Of course. Oh my god, that everybody top knows cover that. is disgusting. Everybody knows what's that. on it. I, ew, like dirt. just get yourself a black light. Placenta. Like no, tell me what's on that, it. I hate that one blanket that they've clearly never washed, and it's just like the community blanket. Mm -hmm. I hate that. I hate that. Everyone takes a turn with it. A lot hotel. of hotels, the shades aren't dark enough. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like they're not thick enough, and then if that light creeps in. It's a problem. I, I know that. You I that. stayed in a, a hotel in Times Square once, not by choice, and <laughs> they're like the their blinds actually didn't even cover the whole window, right. and it was like right next to all those signs, oh and I was God. like dying. I kept on calling the front desk, being like, "This is really your hotel. <laughs> I, I will, <laughs> this is your setup. Am I being pranked? People paying for this? <laughs> the lights. I was. I was saying, is, hotel. is this the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> but where's like the room section where you expect me to sleep? Right. Yeah, man. Uh, I was in a hotel though recently in New York, or whatever, and it was just a small hotel that whenever. Um, another room door open. I thought it was my door. Oh. So the early I was like, oh my God, who's in my apartment? It was no one, but it was just the door next to me opening. But it felt like, because the rooms are so small that it was my door, which is creepy. Yeah. Which oh, the God. article mentions. People you think like, you're not. You're in someone else's space. Someone can just walk in or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Has it ever happened to you where they overbook a room and they give someone your key and they come in and no. you're sleeping and you're like, oh. <laughs> no. Has that happened to you? Yeah, that happened to me. I forget. It was like weird, a weird trip already. And someone walked in and we were like, this is not your room. And they're like, yes, it is. And we we're like, okay, go back to the desk. Obviously, we're already sleeping. That, that is terrifying. Do you want to hear some? That's so scary. And I totally understand that. When I was on like this teen trip when I was younger in like Prague, um, we were all like me and my roommate were in our like hotel bedroom and someone knocked at the door and one of my roommates went and got it opened the door this drunk guy ran in the room and was like ah <laughs> I was like at looking for the window or something and we had to like run out of the room and get people to get him out like that oh was really God. scary no wow <laughs> you guys have horrible experiences I just like complain about the pillows I'm like it's too soft yeah that's, like, that's a, like the biggest problem I've ever had in a hotel room. that's a good problem yeah. to have yeah. don't you love eating croissants in hotel beds though because you could just be like, crash, crunch, crunch, ah! yeah, and you like cool. flake everywhere, and you're like, they have to clean these things <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So it's not like I'm being a monster, yeah. you know? Right. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Totally, true. It's just a good thing to do, you know? Or when you take all your towels and you put them all in the bathtub and you're like, they'll be changed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even use them. I just run water on them and spit on them. Right. Like, when they say, please hang towels and you won't want to save water, yeah. you're just yeah. dropping them on the floor like, they'll clean this, they'll clean yeah, this. Yeah, I do. I usually don't save that much water. I don't. You guys are animals. Yeah. 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 Maybe our, our hotel experience is not <laughs> karma. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I have positive hotel experiences, but I also respect this space. <laughs> That's Jen and I are just <laughs> spitting yeah. loogies at the hotel. We just clog the tub and let the run the water overflow onto the entire floor. There's and shut water. it down. Yes. Mini bars. Love oh, a good mini yeah. bar. Oh yeah. I just dump them out the window. <laughs> I feel but like you pay for that, so yeah. the extra stuff. Actually, I, I don't think I pay for anything. He doesn't pay. She Anna Delvey's it. Yeah. I was gonna say that's the one thing that would make this womb even better is that they provided like free wine or sleep aids, you know? I love how you just referred to it as, the, as this womb. Yeah. Oh. It, it is. sounds it's like really you said room with a lip. It's a room. It's womb. It's I love womb. this womb. Yeah. They may have free wine. It's complimentary wine or whatever. Yeah. I do like the theme hotel experience. I've never actually been to one, but I think I would like a themed hotel. What's a good theme that you would like? Jessica Lang theme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll just, theme? Yeah, so I see like her sister Jude just looking at me. But what theme would you actually like? Like, honestly, like I'm a Lord of the Rings nerd. I would love like one that's like the Shire. You know, like you're in Hobbiton or whatever. That looks so comfy. The Hobbits are like fat and happy. They live very comfortably and sleep yeah. like 12 hours a day. Yeah. yeah, but the reason they're so fat is because that's the only cushion on their bed. <laughs> so, like they sleep on rocks in the floor. So you're just like, you have to be fat to like have any fluff. Um, I think I would yeah. go to like a space themed hotel room. That would be cool. Ooh, yeah. There definitely is one of those in like Tokyo. Oh yeah, I've definitely yeah. seen it. And I think that would be cool. Like if they had like, you know those stars you put on your ceiling when you're a little kid? Oh, oh, yeah. Like I miss those. And I would like those in a hotel room. Oh, okay. that'd be cute. Basic. <laughs> <laughs> so basic. In other news, the Hollywood Reporter asked dozens of their women in entertainment power 100 who their dream 2020 presidential pick would be. Oprah ranked high amongst surveyed women with previous presidential buzz after her 2017 Golden Globe speech. Other top contenders include Texan icon Beto O'Rourke as well as California Senator Kamala Harris. Oh, Woo, who do yes. you think? Kamala. Kamala. Yeah. Kamala. Well, I think she's earned it. For the past two years as a Californian resident, I always call my senators, but I always just call her to thank her because she's already doing it. Yeah, she's already doing everything yeah. that she needs to be doing. I don't have to ask her for anything. <laughs> she, she's I'm like, so great chill. job. I just text her. Yeah. yeah. She's, <laughs> I, you could DM her, snap her. I, when I, I had the opportunity to meet her outside of Soul Cycle, and she was the coolest, as cool as can be, took a picture of me when she was sweaty and just like, we had the best time. No, I mean, this list is really fun to look at because you have Oprah, you have like Ellen they put, put on. but Michelle. Like, Michelle, of course, but Kamala Harris seriously could be she has not announced she's going to run, but I will be supporting her because, you know, I think she's proven herself as Attorney General of California. The past two years as a senator, she's done a fantastic job. But if you look at the past two years, what's happened, especially from 2016, 2018, you know, women of color are the backbone of the Democratic Party. I think the way the primaries are lined up in 2020 and the, with her support, she's going to do very well. And I think it's, you know, one of my favorite Hillary quotes when Hillary says, I'm not asking you to vote for me because I'm a woman. I'm saying one of my qualifications is that I am a woman yeah. and I bring these experiences. You know, I think it's time we have a woman of color not only at, have a seat at the table, but at the head of the table. And I think she could be that person to take this. I agree, but our country is such a nightmare. I don't think we deserve her right now. And I don't think <laughs> she would re realistically get elected because of all the racism and sexism in our country. So my vote is Howard Schultz. Howard cool Schultz guy. is the former CEO. He's a founder of Starbucks. And if you look, he has started to sort of like inch out there. He has a social media presence now. He's on Instagram. He's like doing hometown visits. He stepped down from the Starbucks board. Right. And he's a businessman and he's liberal and he's self-made. So he has everything that people loved about Trump, but, but more liberal views. But, so I think we need like another like legit white dude to just shut people up. Well, that's a lot of the Democratic Party thinks. I mean, he is the anti-Trump. But if yeah. you look at it, Hillary beat Trump by 3 million votes. She lost three states by 70. But the popular vote doesn't votes. matter. But it does. But I'm saying <laughs> the, the way the, part, the pendulum may swing backwards and the way people are looking for it's the way the midterm showed people are supporting women of color yeah. and I think she has 
she's a very good speaker. She's a very good politician. I think she's a real shot and can really surprise people. But what did we learn from polls in 2016? I know they people don't. People are liars. But look they'll at, say but look one at thing in the poll and then they get in that booth yeah. and they vote opposite. I'm just saying, I love Kamala. She would be amazing. Yeah. I just think our country's garbage. And so <laughs> it's not going to happen in the next election cycle. But I think in like 2024, well, if, she's if, like all if, in. If a white guy wins the nomination, if Biden or, or Hickelooper, <laughs> former governor of Colorado, or Schultz, I think she would make a fantastic VP. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. But also, the, the, they're loving Beto. You know Beto from Texas or whatever. And he's a really charismatic <laughs> young guy as well. So I think he could do... I think it's, this would have a really... Don't you love the midterms just ended and we're already talking about 2020? Like, yeah, we nightmare can't never wait. ends, We can't guys. help it. Yeah. You did great. I can't wait to see Beto just, like, shredding, you know, like, doing ollies at the White yeah. House. He's going to be like, what's up, what a burger? He's going to be like, like playing his yeah. acoustic guitar. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he's really cute. He is cute. Is that what we're deciding, who's cute? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Who, is you That's who wins the election. Cute. <laughs> I think it's just like Beto has all this hype. Yeah. But it's like because he's like, look at me, man, I got ass. Right. You know, and you're like, geez, Justin Bieber has ass too. I don't want him to be president. I love him, but it's just like, he's just chilling in parking lots skateboarding. Yeah, you know well, it's going to be so interesting. I mean, I don't think any celebrities are going to run. I believe the Democratic Party would not let just any celebrity be their nominee, but you may disagree Except with me on this. Except for like, the, the Rock. rock. The Rock is going to be our next president. Guys, I just, clap your hands if you think it's possible that The Rock could run for and possibly win. Guys, it's, I don't think so. Okay, a couple. I'm just gauging people's interests. No, because this is the thing. We don't want him to be Brent president. You think we don't good? want him to be president. But if he ran for president, people would get behind him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the not, thing is, if you are a wrestling fan, do you remember <laughs> back in the day, yeah. I remember being like, this guy's fun, but he's not going to make it. And now we're all smelling what he's been cooking mm. for decades, okay? <laughs> he's in every film, every film. I think he's gonna win Oscars. He might be president. He might get chips inserted into all of us where we just worship him. Like yeah. anything can happen because he's really already broke ground that I didn't think he was gonna break. Also, if we remember, Donald Trump was on WrestleMania. So to say that because <laughs> The Rock was a wrestler makes him not valid is not true anymore no, because I, anybody can be president. Of course, but I think actually his wrestle <laughs> career is what makes him actually only qualification he has to be president because he's tough or whatever. <laughs> but I think Trump, the BS around Trump, is this business guy, is this billionaire or whatever. And The Rock doesn't have any sort of fake sort of business job creation. And I think Democratic voters, if you run as a Democrat, would not buy into this. Maybe I, he won't run Does The Rock anything? even know what Medicare Maybe. for All is? Like, you I, don't I think, have to know anything. I don't think. <laughs> I think he could, wears a really great fanny pack. Like, he's okay. so good in a fanny pack. He does. And I think that's what we're really interested in. OK. You, this, is a, this has become such a personality game. This is not about knowing about what yeah. Medicaid is. This is just about <laughs> people wanting Liking someone. Yeah, I, this is the new X Factor. X Factor USA got canceled right. technically, but then we just switched it to <laughs> the, the White House. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's mm -hmm. not a. It's not about policy. I pictured that so the Democratic uh, primary is gonna be like 25, 30 people, and just like That's Simon me. Cowell with an X button being like X. Kanye, The it's Rock, no the ratings will be through oh. the roof. Okay, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll see if it's The Rock or Kamala. Who knows? <laughs> well, now it's time for our first guest, Jeremy Corbell is an investigative filmmaker known for creating projects focused on the paranormal and UFOs. His latest film, Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers, investigates Bob Lazar who made headlines in 1989 when he came forward with groundbreaking claims about Area 51. Lazar has not let any journalist or filmmaker into the private world of his day life, that is, until now. This story is extraordinary, especially if it's true. And it all started in the desert, just north of Las Vegas. A local scientist who's worked at Groom Lake said to be where top secret weapon systems have been tested over the years. He has asked that his identity be shielded. Exactly what's going on up there. What's going on up there could be the most important event in history. Physical contact and proof of, from another, another system, another planet, another intelligence. What would happen to you if the government learned that you were giving us this information? He just wanted to stay alive. Maybe this has been kept from us for a good reason. Sir, how do we know you are who you say you are? My name's Bob Lazar. I'm known for working at a classified base and reverse engineered alien spacecraft. And it went all over the world. And you put Area 51 on the map. Can we ever be made whole if we're not believed? We can't bear 
verify what was going on in his background. I have no motivation to lie. The science and the technology can change us. We've always looked to the skies for answers instead of looking into ourselves. Everyone, please give a warm build bunch welcome to Jeremy Corwell. Jeremy, thank you so, so much for being here. And congratulations, this document is already hugely successful. I heard the yeah. premiere was sold out. Yeah. yeah. So what's it been like having this positive reception already? It's unbelievable. I mean, I didn't expect the hunger and the appetite that people have for this subject. It, number one on iTunes just took over the charts. The world premiere had over 1,600 people. I don't have a company behind me. I just put out a movie. Right. It was heartwarming. It was amazing. Well, I think just like we, we were talking before the show, like UFOs, aliens is so fascinating to us because many of us believe we, ca we cannot be the only ones out there. So can you tell us a little bit about this film? Yeah, so um, the question now is not, you know, are we alone in the universe? Science has finally caught up and we know that life is homogenous throughout the universe. I'm sure we're gonna find microbial life and then intelligent life. Mm -hmm. The question has always been, are they visiting here? Mm -hmm. Or at least now that's <laughs> where we are. So to give you the real short basic is in 1989, my mentor in journalism, a man named George Knapp, broke the story of Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar came forward to protect himself and said, I was reverse engineering alien propulsion system for the United States military. That's what he said. He was in uh, silhouette. He didn't want to be known. For 25 years, George Knapp has been trying to prove or disprove his story and has fought that war on his own. And he's kept bringing Bob out, Bob out, but he won't really, he doesn't really want to talk about it. It's done nothing good for his life, but he let me in. And that's what this film is about. Wow. And it's up to you to decide if you believe him or not. But I got to tell you, this film, you yeah. got to see it before you judge. I mean, with you just describing it, it sounds incredibly fascinating. So for what other motivations do you, you want that, to make this film? I mean, look, I, um, am, I love cinema. I mm -hmm. love film. I'm a one-man band. I film, direct, edit, produce everything on my own. I have a weaponized curiosity. I am dangerous. I want to know the truth. I, I want to know it's, it's true, and I want to know the truth about UFOs. I want to know the truth about Bob. Is he worthy of our trust? Okay. So that's what this film was about. And the, the other agenda was to uplift the visual medium of filmmaking in this genre, which I did. Mickey Rourke narrates the film. Yeah. It's beautiful to watch. Whether you believe or not believe, the, the film will captivate you. And that's the point. Is there, are, without revealing too much, are there any key takeaways we should take away from the film? You know, whatever it is that you are open to taking away from the film is what you're going to get. But the film is dramatic. The events that happen, uh, I mean, it's not a spoiler. You've got to watch it. But right. after 30 years, he's still being monitored. There was right. an FBI raid during the film. I mean, it's crazy. So really what I want you to take away from it is use your logic, your reason, your optimistic skepticism, and look at it and try to decide for yourself if Bob Lazar is worthy of your trust. Mm -hmm. and, and then if, and if he is, right, then is the big question, which is that if they are visiting here, for what purpose? You know, do they like our top hats and kimonos and cupcakes? <laughs> well, why, why are they here? <laughs> and, and for how long, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. It's, look, it's fascinating. Everybody's into aliens, right? Yeah. Someone's got to be piloting those ships, you know, right. people from other places. Maybe they don't have rosé where they're from. You know, that would be a crime against yeah. the galaxy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> or rosé. They're like, wow, the oh. humans are so smart. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> yeah. So as you mentioned, many people have tried to get to Bob before. He's always been very like, no, thank you. What <laughs> do you think made him want to open up to you? My charming personality, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you all my secrets right now. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I just got to say, you are wearing the classic Bob Lazar glasses. Yes. Look at that. Everybody knows. Um, I, yeah, I, please send Bob a picture of me. I, oh, okay, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. I was in India, and this kid that was like, uh, you know, selling chai, and we could communicate, and he spoke great English, and basically he said to me, Oh, UFOs? Bob Lazar, and he took his hand like glasses. He's known around the world. Everybody has known his story. His story has altered the landscape of what you know about everything going with Area 51 to UFOs. But why he talked to me, I think I convinced him that you know, his critics have had the microphone for 30 years now, and they have gone unopposed because he does, this has done nothing good for his life. He didn't want to be involved anymore. He told his story to save his butt. George Knapp has kept him in the light for those 25 years before this, before I was able to do it, and I think what it was, I convinced him, if he doesn't tell his story again, all the lies, 
all the fake news, everything people say about him, that's going down in the historic record. Let's set the record straight. And so we took back that microphone and we've been holding it and we are not letting go. Wow. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And what was the process shooting with him like? Uh, well, uh, you know, it was, it's like the Bigfoot, you know, you know, okay, you're looking for this thing, try to catch him on camera. I mean, he always wanted to talk about science and jet cars and all this stuff. And I was like, I'm here to film about UFOs. So <laughs> it was like interesting. But after a while, he became so comfortable. So in my film, you get to see his daily life. You get to judge his character, not just what people say about him. So it was a very intimate um, setting. I followed him at his work. At, I talked to his mom, his wife people that, that back up his story but have never gone on camera because they had secure jobs working at like Area 52 instead right. of where he worked, which is just south of Area 51. But everybody knows about Area 51. It's a household name because of Bob Lazar. So now you get to hear the story. Now you get it on iTunes and you get to watch it. And it, it's an incredible moment of success for, for UFOs and then for independent films. One last thing I want to say, New York, look, you guys broke a story. You broke a story in December of 2017. My friend, Commander David Fraber, a fighter pilot, engaged a UFO mm. off the coast of California. Okay? Everybody's heard about that. Big news. The Pentagon released two videos. UFOs. These are unknown craft of unknown origin with technologically advanced capabilities that completely outpace our machines. You have been told the UFO phenomenon is real. So now you've got to look at the Lazar story, the Bob Lazar story, and you have to see it differently. And by the way, just on the record, I broke that story before the New York Times about Commander David Fraber, because mm -hmm. he's a friend of mine, did it twice, just have to say. Good for you. Oh. So here's my point, right? <laughs> We're living in a different world, right? Consensus reality needs to catch up with the data-rich reality that we have of this phenomenon. Whether you like it or not, it's real. Now let's get down to the big questions. Why they're here. Mm. They like our coffee or something. Or. Yeah, and why haven't they said hi to me? Right. Uh, you're charming too. I don't <laughs> why know. Why do you think they that they're probably here? have said hi to you? I mean, you've been doing all this research. Yeah. It sounds like you said you were like passionate about finding truth. Yeah. Why do you think maybe UFOs have decided to explore Earth? Total speculation. Uh, you know, maybe it's space tourism. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I would like to believe that you know, as a highly advanced um, intelligence engaging humanity since the beginning of recorded human history, that they have some uh, innate desire to help life evolve mm -hmm. and for us to grow as a civilization and as uh, human beings, uh, you know, humanity. But I don't know that to be true. People get all scared about it, but look, they haven't hurt us. Yeah. So whatever's going on, the people that say to you they've seen something, They've seen something. Mm -hmm. It's happening. It's real. Your government told you that in December 2017. So now we got to start asking, well, what is this about? Right. And do you think that um, it sounds like you spent a lot of time with Bob. Do you ever feel like there were things that he held back from you? No. In fact, that was my one requirement with him. He had one for me. I had one for him. Mine was <clears throat> open book. Every box, every piece of paper, your cell phone, numbers to your family, wow. anything I want. And he did it like that. Because remember, he passed four polygraph tests in 1989 trying to prove his story. He did everything he could to prove his story. So nothing was restricted. His only restriction to me was I could not lie. I could not make stuff up about him for a movie, which I'd never do. My documentaries are investigative journalism. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a d investigative filmmaking. I want to know the truth as much as you do. So that was, it was a really... It was not a smooth process at times because it brought up all these bad memories for him. I mean, he's had a hard run of it. You know, he's been bashed by the UFO community, bashed by the government, bashed by people who stopped being friends with him because he thought he lost his mind being a UFO guy. But he wasn't a UFO guy before this. He was more skeptical than you. Mm -hmm. I'm not skeptical. Well, okay, <laughs> well, then that's not, a, that's not a barometer then, that's like, you know. Yeah. And you, as a filmmaker, are known for exploring uh, these people's journeys who are deep within areas of uh, intelligence, conspiracy, extraterrestrial mm -hmm. communities. What is your goal overall as a filmmaker? To know the truth, to find the truth. I only amplify the voices of people that I find highly credible with extraordinary beliefs. So my whole series and my website is extraordinarybeliefs.com. The idea about that is I find people of high credibility with extraordinary beliefs and if, if I feel it, if I, if I get in there and I start investigating and it's true, then I'm going to amplify that signal and start getting that information out. Yeah, it's so interesting so to me. Interesting. It really is. Uh, what area are you interested in exploring next? Sleep. 
Mm. Yes, I would love to it, just myself just sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, um, the first I've been, look, I've been working yeah. nonstop for 10 years on getting all this stuff out, and I won't stop, and I am interested, and i got a hundred things cooking, but, you know, the main thing is I've got footage that nobody else has of interviews deep inside people's lives, and I will release them as time tells what button I should push, but right now, I want people to hear this story. I want them to hear the story of Bob Lazar, Area 51, and Flying Saucers, because, look, this took... 30 years of my mentor in journalism, George Knapp, 30 years to get to this point where I could pop in and start getting information in interviews that weren't available before. Mm -hmm. So I want to honor my mentor. I want to honor the movie. Really, I want to honor Bob Lazar, too, because he deserves our respect. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, well Jeremy, on that note, thank you so much for being here. When I do come encounter with an alien, I'm going to tell him I know you. <laughs> uh, hopefully that you don't will... got street credit with me with aliens. <laughs> <laughs> they don't Bob, know me. Maybe, maybe Bob. <laughs> um, you can own Bob Lazar, Area 51, and Flying Saucers on digital and catch it on demand December 18th. Jeremy, thank yes. you so much. Thank, thank you, Jeremy. You. It's actually available right now. And available, yes. The hit CW show Gossip Girl went off the air six years ago, but many think the mystery blogger is still at work and shadier than ever. Netflix's savage description for the show recently went viral after fans noticed that it read, rich, unreasonably attractive private school students do horrible, scandalous things to each other repeatedly. Who could be the person behind this synopsis? Well, this, that's one secret Netflix will never tell, but the epic showdown between characters Blair and Serena shows us just why it's strikingly accurate. Or can these two hotties work, work it, it out? out? Wow. By the way, that's Kristen Bell. Yes. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yes. Which is, I mean, amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, fun fact. From Gospel Blake Road was, to Good Place. Blake was eating the uh, Yo Crunch yogurt where you like mix the Oreos in. Yeah. <laughs> that was like old school. <laughs> yeah. Um, the old clip. Yeah. I've never seen Gossip Girl, so this Netflix description that whoever wrote, whoever troll at Netflix just hates the show. <laughs> it's funny because that's exactly what I think about, like the way to describe the show, like privileged teens do bad things to each other. Yeah. Like, okay, that's it's how I think spot on. the show is. Yeah, I think it actually was written by a passionate fan because right. that's why the show is so great. Like, they are terrible, terrible, beautiful, so hot people <laughs> yeah. repeatedly doing the same harmful things to each other, and yet they don't want to, like, escape one another. Right. They want to get closer and more incestuous with their relationships. It's so good. And then yeah. their parents start dating each other, and their oh, parents yeah. are just that scheming. I mean, yeah. the whole... some of them are kind of related. I know, right? I it, yeah, it's All these hot parents. I remember watching this when I was in high school and like middle school and seeing them and I was so frustrated that they were my age. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to be my age. I was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> Shut it off and I like put my rap bracelet back on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think it's funny also like a telling of the times, like this show is so popular. Like this is what people thought New York was. Like look at these beautiful New Yorkers. But now you have like Broad City, which is these like Abby and Lana just running around like a shithole in New York just on the subway. Right. Like, I feel like it's evolved of like how we well, depict New York. But it's also a completely different community that they're talking yeah. about. They're talking about the New York City private school, high school community, as opposed to like yeah. hipsters living in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. true. So, but yeah. But still, for people living outside of New York yeah. City, they're probably like, oh, this is what it's all like. And then you move in, and you're like, why is there poop everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> why don't I look like Blake Lively? <laughs> oh, my God. And I read that Blake Lively on set, she loved her wardrobe so much, so she just started taking it home. Yeah, that's why she's so a fashion icon now. So that was birth to her fashion revolution. <laughs> Tony, guys, she's a fashion icon. Yeah, Brittany likes to <laughs> campaign that. <laughs> you're just going to, like, always, <laughs> like, I was going to keep bringing it back if you guys fought me so hard on it. Well, she had a good, like, a month ago, she was doing the, all of those suits to all yeah. of the premieres, yeah. and she really did look amazing. So she that was great. a good moment for Blake. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love Leighton Meester, too, so much. She's so amazing. I feel like she was amazing in this show. Like, she is, like, I just love really rude, bitchy women. I mm -hmm. think they're the hottest thing in the world. And she was, like, iconic in this show. Yeah. Even though she was wearing a headband. Like, I don't think I could <laughs> ever be scared of someone wearing a headband until... Blair Waldorf right. came She definitely bought the headband back. I'm yeah. so surprised you liked her because I could see you in real life just fucking hating someone who's just that mean. I mean, I think if you're mean and you, like, if you've earned it, like, if you look like Blair Waldorf, right. then yeah. that's good. I just don't like people who are mean who are like, I'm like, what is your talent? And also, what's wrong with your face? Yeah, yeah. you know, that's okay. fair. I think it'd be a fun activity though, like if Netflix allowed viewers to like describe their shows, like The OC, whatever, and Shannon gets to describe it, or like uh, The Office, like how yeah, would Ali describe like? But even love it even more, like doing it for old shows. Yes, old like shows. how do you describe uh. Friends now? Yes, you're like, like six entitled by people live in really big apartments that aren't realistic. <laughs> yeah. Like that's how I would. Describe and it. Rachel's a cool haircut. <laughs> yeah, like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's that'd be it. Anyway.
<laughs> yeah, do you guys remember any of the other cast members? Not I feel enough. like Chase Crawford, ever since, remember, that, like, uh, I think the last season, he, like, got into a bar fight and oh. split his lip, and after that, like, didn't get any work, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, really? So yeah, like, he's still hot. He just has a little, like, <laughs> lip scar. Chill, people. <laughs> I didn't know that. The what, yeah. what men have to go through with their appearance. I it know. is so, so hard. Yeah. Just one hurt lip can ruin your career. I mean, it's That's really it. hard. It's really What's hard. What's the name <laughs> of the actor? Oh, Penn Badgley. I yeah. ran into yeah. him the other day on the street. Oh, really? Yeah, he's always on the subway. He's in a band. People yeah. say he smells bad, but I was sitting next to him once, and I think he smells delicious. <laughs> like, I would lick sweat off his body. Like, cool. his B.O. is mwah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and yes. life experience, they're so colorful and just, <laughs> you just never know where, what the next thing she's going to say. Right, when she <laughs> said lick, did anybody else tense up? I was like, what is she going to say? I was like, <laughs> you guys are like, she's spreading it. No. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a little tired. I'm not ready to spread anything this morning. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. I'm sick. Oh. All right. Well, you guys are all wrapped up on Gossip Girl, so we should move on because it's time for our next guest and our furry friend Tinkerbell the dog is known for her award winning work as a model and actor she's become a beloved fixture in Hollywood hanging with celebs as iconic as pop singer Taylor Swift and she works closely with North Shore Animal League to advocate for animals who don't have a voice everyone please give a warm build brunch welcome to viral sensation Tinkerbell the dog Woo! and her owner Sam Carroll <laughs> I mean that's not my fault Nice to meet you, I'm Lucas. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yes, very nice Hi. to meet you, Tinkerbell. Nice. Hi. Hello. Hello, Tinkerbell. And hi, you too. Hi, Sam. I'm Sam. Hi, Sam. Hi. Welcome, Hello. Sam Carroll and Tinkerbell. Hi, Tinkerbell. Hi. Hi. Oh, How are you? Yeah, you're so pretty. You're so friendly. She's so skinny. Yeah. yeah. She's so tiny. She, she's she tiny is an girl. actor and a model, <laughs> so that probably explains why yes. she has to keep so fit. She keeps her long, lean model body. I yes. love it. So could you she's tell so me, friendly. how did she get started in this business? Uh, this is actually my first animal ever, and oh. I was visiting my friends at a shelter. And they kept talking about this tiny dog that was left there, and she's been there for a couple of weeks. And I said, let me see her. And I walked over to her, and out oh, she came. <laughs> oh. Out she came from the cage, yeah. and I didn't know what to do with her, but I ended up taking her home. Yeah. Wow. And just walking her around the city, everybody would stop her, and one person happened to be an animal agent. And her first job was Ralph Lauren. Oh, wow. Whoa. Of course. And it was supposed to be a quick shoot. She ended up being there half a day and ended up being the face of the campaign. Wow. Wow. Oh. How, long did you, sorry, oh, okay. how long did you have her before that all happened? Uh, let's see. I adopted her at about nine months. OK. And that happened at a, about a year. Wow. So not long. Like everything, boom, 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 boom. Wow. And everything continues to go boom, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an amazing adventure. Yeah. And now she has a travel, international travel blog. Oh, my, and yeah. she's won awards, and she's just so friendly. And I mean, she, people say not to meet your heroes, but they haven't <laughs> met Tinkerbell, because she is living, and so she's sweet. everything I wanted her to be and more. Aww. She has upwards of like 300,000 followers on social media. So how has social media played a part in her career and kind of making her this like viral sensation? It's been huge. I didn't have any social media for her, obviously, when I got her. <laughs> and I didn't, at her fourth job in is when the social media started because someone on the set said, I want to follow her. What's her handle? And I said, she's a dog. <laughs> she doesn't have one. <laughs> and left the set with an Instagram. And it's been, it blew up. And it's been huge. I feel like her talent agents get her, like her national Target mm -hmm. commercials and national print work. But what she gets through social media campaigns is unbelievable. Unbelievable, and, and it's way above and beyond her regular bookings. What, like, and what's her like day-to-day? -day? Does she need like a hot tea in the morning? Like, what is, how does she wake up? This is it, Diva. <laughs> <laughs> Diva, she wakes up and she's, what am I wearing today? Uh -huh. And running through the city, whether it's an appointment or a shoot or an appearance or some days she gets to chill, but a lot of days we're traveling. We mm -hmm. just got home yesterday from the Catskills. Mm -hmm. And before the Catskills, we were in Kissimmee. She was doing a week shoot in Kissimmee for Experience Kissimmee. And it's a lot, yeah. but she's great. 
As you can tell, five she's, pounds and she's raring to go. She's so well behaved. Yeah. She's just really chill, no formal training. I just talk to her, no idea what I'm doing. I <laughs> probably am doing something wrong, but it works. <laughs> she's made for it. Well, speaking of travel, you mentioned you have a travel blog, Travel yes. Tank. Yes. It's an award-winning blog. So like, yes. what's been some of your favorite places to travel or some of her favorite places to travel? Her top place is definitely Paris. Oh, oh, of course. Oh, she would do so. She does so well. So with that. She had that beret on and she oh, sported it. Yeah. She had a French God. accent when she came home. She, oh, like, she did. Yeah. And now every place is like, this isn't Paris. <laughs> <laughs> the cat kills? Oh. She, she's judging and, you know, giving her a little side eye. But Paris was definitely one of the top most memorable. And then Venice, Italy. Oh, oh my God. Another. She's got good taste. Yeah. Gondola ride. <laughs> And yes. Something tells me Sam has really good taste, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just really lucky I have Tinkerbell. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then also you mentioned, like, she's kind of become this, like, fashion icon and top tier yes. fashion campaigns have, like, employed her and she's, like, done runway stuff. So, like, yep. how, tell us about that and how, like, it's been now she's, like, in fashion. Well, everything she wears comes courtesy of the UPS or FedEx driver. <laughs> um, Gucci collars, she has two. I have none. <laughs> um, 11th Street Breed made her this jacket. She has partners with Max Bone in New York City, the Wagwear, and everyone just wants her to wear their clothing, so they send her presents. So her wardrobe is much better than mine <laughs> and much larger than mine. And for her to get out there in New York Fashion Week and walk on the runway with so these cute. top models is it's something that is memorable and unbelievable and every day I wake up and I'm like is this real <laughs> is this ever, really happening do you ever like want to sneak in something for yourself there you're like actually Tinkerbell wants this in like a <laughs> medium human size <laughs> sweater please I do try that and sometimes it does work most of the time it doesn't work <laughs> but I do try it I'm very envious of Tinkerbell's diva clothing. Yeah, you could be like, <laughs> yeah. I want a really big Louis tote to yeah, put right. Tinkerbell exactly. in. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. If you're listening, Louis, <laughs> send it over. <laughs> exactly. What mix is she? She's a Papatisse, which is half Papillon and half Maltese. Oh. She is so cute. So cute. Supposedly very rare. I don't know, but mm. I guess so. She um, just turned seven years. Mm. She had a big seven sassy birthday, <laughs> right? Sassy seven. <laughs> And yeah, it's a rare breed, so I don't, I Google all the time Papatisse and I never find anyone, but there has to be a sibling out there. Yeah. Because most dogs have more than one. Yeah. So somewhere there is a little sibling. And uh, you said, so she's worked on all these big campaigns, yeah. shoots, she's met lots of celebrities. <gasps> Taylor Swift, mm. we have some housewives. Will you share with us some really fun encounters? Taylor Swift is my top, because I'm a big Swifty. <laughs> <laughs> And um, that was just unbelievable. In, in the middle of a concert for Tinkerbell to be taken out of my arms wow. by Taylor. And it, it was just oh, we got the something, pictures. yeah, pictures, yeah, housewives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like every encounter is Linda. just something that I'm like, did this just happen? <laughs> is, is this happening? And each time she meets someone, the Lin-Manuel, yeah. Oh my gosh, like, oh my how God. do you do that? Tinkerbell kissing Lynn manuel <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, are there any celebs on your uh, bucket list for her? Oh, every celeb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, every and fair. any, every and any. Uh, she's a big theater girl, as she's been Chowsy and Gypsy, so she loves all the theater <laughs> pros, and uh, I just, I mean, Idina would yeah. be great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Tinkerbell has this huge platform, but also really focuses on important issues for other pets and dogs, including uh, no-kill sh shelters and adoption. Yeah. So why is it important for Tinkerbell to also take a stance on those important issues? Well, Tinkerbell wouldn't be here if I didn't get her at the shelter. Mm -hmm. So we support those shelters and we help them and she's out there and she's the ambassador for um, North Shore Animal League. And it's just really important for people to know there are great dogs out there. You don't need to pay $3,000. You don't need to go and find a breeder for a special dog. Every dog is special. Mm -hmm. right. And every dog, I mean, the love and the caring, it's an unbelievable bond. Right. Yeah. And there, there are those dogs at shelters. Yeah. And it's really important. <laughs> she was supposed to just falling asleep. Yeah, Are we boring you, Tinkerbell? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, get back to fashion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love healthy dogs, but like, hello. Look at my car. She's fashion. like, the animal lead. <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah, we do that too. <laughs> she's very judging, as you can tell. I she love it. So cute. So it's safe yeah. to say she's changed a lot of other dogs' lives, but also your life. Totally changed my life. Yeah. That, as I said, every day I wake up and I, I can't believe 
each experience and each thing. I mean, I'm here with you today, <laughs> and I wouldn't have been here today. So every day something happens that it's like, can this keep getting popped? <laughs> and it does. It does. It really does. Oh, well, we're so happy to have the both of you. Yeah. Thank you so much to Tinkerbell and Sam for being here. You. And you can learn more about Tinkerbell at www.tinkerbellthedog.com. We'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same table. Yeah.